Hey, Big Brother fans, it was veto comp day in the BB26 house with everybody playing. HOH McKenzie nominees, Kimo and Rabina and the two spares, Chelsea and Cam with Final Five. Everybody gets to play. I was hoping for a game-altering veto win in Big Brother comics, but I was also prepared for disappointment. And it turns out as a little of both. Before we get into who won the Golden Power of Veto and what they plan to do or not do, Let's talk just real quick about what the hell Mackenzie is thinking. And please click subscribe if you're not following us. Last night, Kimo asked Rubina, why is Mackenzie putting us up instead of going after Cam? Kimo is salty about being on the block for the seventh time. And, you know, unless Kimo won the veto, likely could have been, based on the current plans, his last time on the block, and he'd be evicted on Thursday. And... Kimo and Rabina talked about Mackenzie being played for a fool by Chelsea and Cam, who are a solid final two and won't take her to the end. Rubina thinks if she or Kimo won the veto, they could revisit it with Mackenzie, try to open her eyes. I wish them luck with that. She regretted putting up Leah last week and realized it was bad for her game, and she's just making the same mistakes again. You can't comp beast your way all the way through if your eyes are blinded, you know? So Rubina and Kimo were talking about trying to talk to Cam and Mackenzie together without Chelsea there. They want to tell them none of them can beat her in the end. Boy, are they right. So Friday night with Cam elsewhere in the house, Chelsea was reassuring Mackenzie that she is her real final two, not Cam. Chelsea was telling Mackenzie that he rode her back the whole way. Kind of true. But he's still her final two because she knows she can beat him and she can't beat Mackenzie. And probably, we'll see. But here's what continues to astound me. Mackenzie told Chelsea she still can't believe that Rubina was trying to convince her that Chelsea wanted to target her in the double eviction. Mackenzie is an idiot for not at least considering it, especially considering it was the truth, 100% the truth. So Chelsea backed up that lie, promising Mackenzie that she was going to have words with Rubina on her way out when they evict her. What words? How dare you tell Mackenzie the truth? (laughs) Chelsea has so thoroughly brainwashed Mackenzie, like CIA level shit, you know, so nothing can break the spell at this point. Another item of note, Mackenzie told Cam when they were alone that she might renom Chelsea if somebody plays the veto to impress the jury, knowing that Chelsea would be safe. And Cam talked Mackenzie down saying the jury's not going to see that, just who's evicted. And then, of course, he ran that right back to Chelsea. So today... With the intense BB Comics veto comp to play, they let the house guests sleep in and then served them up with a jolt of caffeine and sugar. Starbucks coffee and crispy cream donuts. Yummy. And the feeds were down for, of course, hours and hours because everybody's playing and we all know this comp can run very long. My money was on Mackenzie winning it. Very interested to see everybody's, you know, comics covers. And uh, so... Live feeds went down, came up a little less than six hours later, and I wanted to see Kimo as Captain Oversight, like with him glaring over his glasses on his comic cover, but they went with something Hawaiian that just seems lame, Volkimo, like a volcano. I mean, he's never boiled over or erupted. He's threatened to, but he's all talk, no action. And somebody was joking on Twitter about Mackenzie not needing the zip line to see over it. Tall girl is tall. Her comic was something about a robot, probably some comp killing robot. Uh, For Cam, I was hoping for Cowboy Cam with him on that little carnival horsey ride that he loved, but I didn't expect that they were going to circle back around to the Zingbot invisible thing, and they did. He's like the invisible house guest. Chelsea's was a microchip, a callback to her downgrade week one, I guess. I was wondering if they would do something faith-based, like the master pastor or something. Rubina's, I figured, would be about her being small because all her gameplay was either Tucker or doing talent show stuff with chemo. Hers was the roller rebel about her skates, which is not even in-game stuff. So uh, I wish they'd done Leah as the simpinator for getting Quinn and Joseph to follow her around. But predictably, they did Chubby Chaser. Maybe there's a chunky Quinn running for or from her on the comic cover. Lisa, we already knew, was going to be glitter themed. They branded her the glitter critter. Kenny should have been a knight. 
Sir quits a lot. After all his let me go home whining, instead they went with sweet Kenny K. Again, lame. I correctly assumed Matt would be crazy eyes and that we'd get young Cedric as his superhero thing. Angela was the atomic mom. I was hoping for the tearful twerkinator myself. Quinn's was as I figured about his hair, like daddy long hair, some kind of spidery thing. As for Joseph, as of the time I'm taping this, I haven't seen anything about his. I'd like to see him as the overestimator because he really thought he was something and was playing top tier at this game and then was gone. T-Core, I'm assuming, is going to be the caped crocheter, the crochet crusader, something like that. But I haven't heard them mention hers yet either. Of course, it'll come out in the next update. I will let you know. As for Tucker, his was the instigator, the name of that secret power. And I wonder wondered if any of them knew that he was the one doing it before now because they should have figured it out as they slid by on that zip line. Brooklyn's was about her purloining Angela's meats and cheeses. Maybe she's the charcuterie slayer. Feeds went down 11 a.m. Big Brother time came back up five hours, 44 minutes later, showing us the golden power of veto around Mackenzie's neck. That is her second combo HOH and veto win. And with Chelsea's two targets on the block, she is hoping Mackenzie won't use that veto. But right after the comp, she was talking to Chelsea up in the HOH room and was talking about Cam. Apparently, he gave up. He took a rest. He sat down. He came in after chemo with a lower time. I mean, really? Mackenzie said what I've been saying. He's throwing comps, and she tells Chelsea he may be planning to target one of them next week. And Chelsea, of course, is working on her to leave noms alone and says they can target Cam next week. Mackenzie is considering pulling Rabina down and putting up Cam. If she does it, that'd be a split vote 1-1 one, one with Mackenzie breaking the tie how she wanted on her own HOH. But as we know, Chelsea's been running Mackenzie's HOHs, so I don't see it happening. By the way, I have something funny. Hang on here to the end. I have this little video clip. Brooklyn and her whole family trolled Angela on the charcuterie incident. The family dog was involved too. It is hilarious. Please click subscribe if you're not following us. And I'm going to show you this video because it killed me. She's freaking eating my charcuterie stuff. How annoying. I don't mind sharing it, but it was awarded to me. Oh, my God. Oh, these are done. I love it. Brooklyn, she did not ask me. Mmm. Burrata is my favorite. Oh. Dude, the brie. That is delish. And those cheeses and meats do stay good for two to three weeks. They don't go bad in a week. Oh, it just pisses me off. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast. Because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.